Good morning. Good morning. Right. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, yeah. <laughs> Mike, David Moore, Dallas Morning News. Uh, this being your fifth season, coming off three straight 12 and four seasons, what's the message to your team as you go into this year? Uh, the message is really, uh, you know, today is just, you know, the opportunity in front of us. You know, we, we have a theme that we do every year. Uh, today was not the day, um, but we, we're going to, you know, really just get a jump on Cleveland. You know, we started on them last week. We were able to get some reps on normal D&D &D and third down, so we're going to, frankly, finalize normal down distance and third down today in the meetings. Uh, we're completing the walkthroughs as, I'm, as I stand here. Uh, so it's really just about beating Cleveland. Clarence Hill, All City, Dallas. Um, it's a housekeeping thing. Just real, I was going to say four words. I know. I was going to say four words. But uh, it's a housekeeping thing. Uh, so much was made about Trey Lance competing for the backup job in, in camp and in preseason. Mm -hmm. uh, have you settled that? And who's, is Cooper your backup? Uh, yes, Cooper. Cooper's taking the two reps this week. Uh, but uh, I felt very, you know, very encouraged and uh, really excited with the with the growth, you know, the Trey, the, the Gray took through the whole process. I mean, you know, I, I feel like I answered a question the same way every every time. It's just we just got to continue to develop him. Uh, you can see the, you know, uh, the things that he's really focused on. You know, the con, you know, the concept footwork and things like that, and it it got better each week uh, throughout the preseason. You know, I thought he did a great job extending plays with his legs. You know, made some. Made some plays um, in the quarterback run phase of it, but you know, just trying to continue that drop back passing. Uh, so he's he's making strides, and you know, the preseason was. I don't know if there's anybody on our team that's that benefited more from the preseason than Trey Lance. Uh, Mike Tarks with the ESPN. David said it's year five for you. Does it seem like it's been that long that, that you've thirty-five that... dog years, right? Yeah. yeah so <laughs> no, it's. Uh, uh, frankly, it goes, it's gone too fast. Uh, I think any time in life, you know, the older you get, the faster it goes. You know, my, my, my father told me, you know, quite a long time ago, I uh, haven't done a great job listening to him, that you need to, when life's flying by, it's, it tells you you're doing too much. You know, it's going too fast. So uh, something I try to pay attention to, you know, obviously in this industry, and it's challenging. And, you know, I'm talking more about, you know, the missing things, you know, with your family and, and always keeping that the priority. You know, the time allotment doesn't indicate that, but, uh, you know, I was raised family first, and, and, I, and I still believe that. Um, so, but it, it's gone fast. And I think when you, you know, when you play into the, you know, you have long seasons and, you know, your off seasons are, you, know, you have a lot of change, you know, it just kind of all runs together. And, you know, we've had a lot of change uh, the last couple of years. What do you think you've learned the most being the Cowboys head coach? Learn the most. Um, I, I think you're always if you if you don't learn um, in, in this in this league, especially at this position, then you're definitely going too fast. You're not slowing down to absorb the great lessons, uh, the pro and con that uh, you're able to, you know, interact with on a daily break basis. I've learned so much since being here. Um, learned a lot about, you know, I mean, just the game of football. You know, it's a it's a it's an involve an involving door of trends. Uh, so staying on top of that. So that's always. That's some challenge I've always enjoyed uh, being a part of that. So uh, football-wise, I think organizational development and interaction uh, of, of a football program, you know, in the business component of it, this is a totally different, different environment than, than I've worked in the past. So there's been tremendous lessons there uh, that you can pay for it. So yeah, there's so, so many different things. Um, um, anytime you have an opportunity to sit down with Jerry Jones, you 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 know, you're going to listen and, and learn. And uh, that, that's something that I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for. So, um, you know, he's, he's exposed me to things that I was not exposed to before, uh, just through conversation and, and his experiences. So I'm very grateful for that. But, uh, yeah, I could go on and on. I mean, relationship-wise, I just can't say enough about this coaching staff and this locker room. You know, they're built the right way. And uh, we've, we've done the work in the offseason. I, I feel like we've had a very, very productive uh, training camp, and you know it's it's time. You know, and that's really what today was about. It's it's time to go win a game. Uh, we need to be better on the road. So that's really what the focus is right now. My last one for you. Do you remember what happened in year five up in Green Bay? Sure do. Good year. <laughs> Tough year though. Started started very very difficult year. 
to start off with. So it's all about the finish, as I'm told, right, Todd? So. Yeah, I'm sure with the athletic, uh, with CD Lamb, is is he where he needs to be right now, or is there still a ramp up period? Well, I mean, where he needs to be, yeah, I, you know, I, I'm impressed where he is. I mean, I did, which I wasn't expecting not to be. Uh, you know, CD's always been on top of his, you know, his game as far as conditioning, and uh, you could you could tell he's he, he where his commitment uh, was this off season. So he's you know he's he's bigger, stronger. So, uh, but yeah, we 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 get we have a a number each day that we want to hit. Um, so, um, you know, he wanted to go all you know. Full bore, um, you know, in the practice Thursday, but you know we, we had them on a on a pitch count, so we we have a number today that we want to hit. So and we'll, and we'll continue. We feel, you know, they'll give us what five six practices uh, to get them ready. So I, I feel like we'll be where we need to be by the end of the week. And then what do you see for Brandon Cooks this week? Ah, uh, similar similar format, just uh, just being being smart, coming back into it. So I mean, but uh, I don't know if anybody's put as much work into the. Off season as Brandon has, you know, it's particularly with the, you know, with the work away from here with with Dak and the perimeter guys. So, uh, so I'm not concerned there. It's really just getting the details, details of the game plan. Yeah. Calvin Watkins, Dallas Morning News. Are you better equipped now as a head coach to handle the scrutiny that comes with you lose a game, everyone in the world's falling apart, you know, and that kind of thing. Better, better equipped. Um, yeah, I think that's you know. I mean, you have to be. I mean, it's it's part of the job description. Um, yes, and, and some 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 jobs are you know are harder than others. You know, I'm, I'm definitely aware of that. Uh, but yeah, I, I I just look at that as part of the job. You know, and you know the, the hardest part about scrutiny is is really, I would think every coach would head coach would answer it this way. It's really not about standing up here in, in front of the cameras or it's in front of you wonderful people. It's it's really your families. You know, it's that. That, that you know, that's that's the group that has to has to learn to deal with it. Uh, but you know, for me, I just look at that as part of my job responsibility. Sorry, so, Sophia, Mike, with, with the pressure to win, your contract status, all that. How how do you how do you deal with that pressure? Are there things that you do, ways that you think that help you kind of handle that? Well, you're, that just the way you expressed your question. Uh, that's it's really you know, it's not a, a viewpoint of mine. Um, you know this 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 business is is, is about opportunity. Um, I'm, I'm thankful and and appreciate the opportunity in front of me, and that, that's really how it's been. I mean, you know, I, and I, I get what goes in contracts, and I really don't want to speak on it because I haven't spoke on it because there's really nothing to talk about because it, it doesn't matter. Um, the only thing that matters is is today, and, and that's really I think something that we can all just stay in touch with uh, because we do have. Responsibilities, you know, outside of winning games, and uh, but the only thing that you know truly pays the bills is, is winning games. So, uh, and that's where my mind's at. I mean, I'm 30 plus years into this, so uh, we we know how we know how things work. Um, but yeah, I, I I can't stand up in front of a group of men and consistently on a daily basis uh, demand uh, that they focus their time and energy on winning. And then I'm up here talking about things that have nothing to do with winning. So I guess that's how I deal with it. Um, and so much has been said this offseason with Steve and Jerry about, and, and you just referenced about finishing in the playoffs. How do you how do you make sure that the team still maintains focus, for example, this week on Cleveland and week to week until you get to January? Well, I mean, we, I mean it's not hard to focus on Cleveland. I mean, it's, it's you know, it's, it's what's right in front of us. Um, yeah, you have to have a plan. Um, you know, my plan is for 21 games. Uh, we have a 21 game plan. Um, laid it out today in the team meeting. You know, just the overview of it, and uh, it's the way I've always done it. Um, I, I think you clearly there's there's obstacles that you know you're going to have to overcome. Uh, there's a process that um, we have that works. You know, whether it's veteran players, younger players, um, the details of how we want to coach. Um, you know, certain parts of the uh, week are, are important. I think it's very, very important in today's game, and it's been this way for probably the last 15 plus years. Is the development development of your younger players? These guys are going to play. Uh, we're going to have some guys play earlier than maybe we ever had um, in my time here. But you know, my experience is these young players playing you know in November, December important games. So 
uh, you better pay that forward. Uh, so that's part of the plan. So, um, you know, I don't think there's too many things that you cannot, you know, look forward to and have part of your everyday operation. Because if you don't, uh, you can't just, you know, shift gears in week seven and, you know, decide that you're going to, you know, you know, be something that you haven't, you know, uh, really focused on being in off-season program, training camp. That's why we take eight full practices to install everything offensive, defense. So, you know, these are all things that are part of the plan to, to make sure that we're you know, putting the energy, the time, the vision, you know, to, to be playing our best football at the end of the year, you know, and frankly, and learn from all the experiences that we've had here for five years, you know, it's pro and con. So um, that all goes into a good, healthy plan. Yeah. Garrett Podell, CBS Sports. Mike, you talked about getting ready for Cleveland. How do you feel at this point, now that you've had a full offseason with Tyler Guy and Cooper Beebe to face Miles Garrett and the number one total defense from last season? Well, I mean, like, you know, we're just just like they are. You know, they, they've had a chance to look at, you know, the number one offense all offseason. And, you know, so we, we've been enjoying, you know, looking at the, at the tape that they put there. It's, it's, it's an excellent defense. It's uh, coordinated very well. Um, I, I think Jim does an excellent job. So uh, looking forward to the, the competition Sunday. Uh, but yes, we, we have young players. This is going to be their their first for a lot of things. You know, it's going to be their first NFL game. It's going to be their first NFL road game. So I mean, it's so you know, all that applies. And you know, we, we're just going to make sure we're ready to go. And I have confidence that we will be. Yeah. Uh, Joe Hoy, All City Dallas. Uh, kind of building off that question, Jim Schwartz is known for having a consistent defensive identity. He called them the, their defense a fastball defense, but being back in year two, it's allowed them to work on some change-ups. I'm just curious as your game plan for them, how does that? How do you factor that into not only your game plan, but what you might expect on Sunday? Well, I mean, that's the beauty of September football. You know, if, if you just want to apply mathematics to, not that it, it's an exact science, because, you know, how, how you would uh, evaluate that and and data collect uh, this particular point I'm about to make. But, you know, historically, and I, I learned it from a, a gentleman I have a lot of respect for in analytics, but he, uh, Mike Ayers always talked about 35% of the plays in weeks one through four are unscouted looks. So, I mean, that, that's got to be part of your part of your prep. Um, I think, well, how do you do that? Well, I mean, we obviously have had time to watch, you know, the things that they, they, they did last year, how they're utilizing their players. Uh, Jim has a history. You know, the longer you coordinate in this league, uh, the longer the, the book is on you. So you, you so you're aware of some of the things he likes to do. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, it's it is September football. I mean, he's gonna he's gonna have wrinkles uh, for us, and uh, and that's why, frankly, we've spent more time this year uh, than and probably the other years uh, with competitive drills, where you know Mike calls it against you know, myself. And that's how you prepare for unscouted looks. Uh, because in my experience, uh, particularly back in the 90s, when you had two-day practices, the toughest discussions you have during the course of a year are really your defense versus your offense. Uh, because you know each other the best. You know, you, you, you practice against each other. You know the tweaks and adjustments. Uh, you know the stress points schematically. Um, so those, those, those situations come up during the course of training camp. And, and I think, you know, I'm hoping. and, and, and Confident that you know the extra competitive periods that we've had, because uh, they have you know, they have you know given us a lot of you know really good conversation and practice reps, particularly in the area of pressure um, of competing against one another. So and and Jim's of the same mindset. You know he's a he's a very good pressure coordinator. Uh, he, he does a really good job of his disguise and mannerisms uh, before the snap of the ball. So I mean that's and, but at the end of it, that's why he played the game. I mean that's that's the beauty of it. Scott. Scott Dixon with the AP. You had the Jordan injury two years ago, Trayvon last year. You start without Deron this year. How do you think that room kind of managed things the previous couple of years, and how hopeful are you of them kind of doing the same thing, maybe with a Kalen Carson stepping in? Well, definitely. I, I think it's it's something that you can point to, and I, I think any time you have uh, a situation that occurs and you can point internally to how you've handled it, that that's 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 part of that five year growth. Um, you know that I'm talking about. So yeah, definitely. In you know, and I think clearly with Al and Cannon, you know, and the guys that are in that room uh, already, it's it's definitely an experience uh, that that you know guys can lean on. So yeah, I think it definitely helps you. Aaron, uh, Mike, Aaron Kazan's Lone Stone Live. Um, you made a lot of additions on the defensive line there, kind of, kind of just towards the end of the training camp. How do you feel about that group now, and what have you seen from some of those guys? 
Well, I mean, the, the emphasis on, on getting you know, bigger, stronger, more experience in the middle, I, I think we definitely hit the target there. Uh, so I do feel really good about it, um, you know, and, and really going all the way back to, you know, signing Eric, you know, in, in, in free agency. So uh, we want to get stronger up the middle and, um, you know, and we have some young guys too. So, I mean, that's, the, and that's really where you want it. Uh, I, I think the experience level that we have uh, with, with these veterans that we've added is, is definitely a nice shot in the arm, um, but it, it'll also be very, very good for our young players. Nick. Nick Harris, DallasCowboys.com. And your offseason evaluation of Deuce Vaughn and what he did during his rookie season, how much intention and effort was put into finding more ways to get the ball in his hands going into year two? How did you kind of see that manifest during the training camp? Well, I think clearly with his, his opportunity to train, you know, other positions was was, was a focus uh, for us and Deuce. Uh, so, you know, you, you go to the practices. So you, you saw how we implemented that throughout uh, training camp. So, you know, we'll see how that you know, translate to games. Uh, but yeah, definitely there, there's been training and, and like anything, I mean, you know, every, every exit interview that, that, you know, I've always had with players, I mean, you evaluate their past season, but, it, you know, every one of them wants to create more value for himself. And so, you know, position flex is, 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 a, is a great way to, to do that, particularly when you're, you know, when you're young and, uh, you know, special teams, you know, all those things. So, but I, I think that, that definitely, you know, is part of the way we train Deuce, you know, throughout the offseason and training camp. And then with Dallin Cook, what have you seen from him early on, and how has he kind of added to that? Role? Yeah, excited to see him work this week. You know, I think the biggest thing for Dallin is just the language. You know, he he has to make cross the language barrier, and that's that's always you know not a big adjustment, but I, I think he'll do fine there. But I'm excited to see him run. Christy. Christy Scales, Cowboys Radio on the fan. This will be the first weekend that we see the new kickoff rule in regular season. From the sample size you saw in preseason, uh, what lessons did the staff get from that? Does it alter anything moving forward? I don't think it alters anything because, you know, we, there wasn't really a whole lot shown. Uh, you know, we have, we have a, a thought process uh, that we'll adhere to. I, I just think like anything, whether it's offensive coordinator, defense coordinator, no different for John, a special teams coordinator, you have to take a really hard look at volume because uh, anytime you're in an, in an area of new, you know, whether it's September football, um, new scheme, you know, obviously a whole new, you know, brand new, you know, situation with the kickoff, you know, uh, coverage and kickoff return. I mean, we, I, I think we got to be really smart with uh, how much we do and how much we ask our guys because it's just like anything. This is going to come down to the fundamentals and techniques and, and who who teaches it the best and who and ultimately the players who performs the best. Um, and you, you'll see some you'll see some scheme wrinkles, I'm sure, uh, because I, I think everybody's kind of taking an approach that, that they really don't want to show much. Now, uh, for those that are going to kick it out of the end zone, which you know I, I think with Turp back here, that's 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 probably a good option. But it, it is outdoors; it's on the lake, so. Hopefully half the game we'll get some opportunities, but hopefully they're not kicking either. So, <laughs> Babe. Babe Loffenberg, uh, 105 free, the fan. Um, you, you've mentioned a number of times about playing better on the road. Yeah. Um, obviously, you're not going to do the same thing that you've been doing. Will that be a change in practice during the week? Will that be a change of travel schedule? Or what, what have you? Yeah, definitely. Uh, looked at the statistics. Looked at the statistics. Looked at production. Um, you know, there was a couple of things that came out of that. Um, so, uh, looked at the travel schedule, sleep schedules. You know, went through all that. Uh, but you know, you, you also have things you want to get done here on Saturday. You know, how, how much of that a applies into it. Uh, looked at some things game day. So, uh, I would say we've made some tweaks. Uh, I don't think. I'm not going to give you anything earth shattering. You're going to go, okay, that's going to make make a huge change. But uh, yeah, I, I think you have to go through things eyes wide open. Uh, I, I try to be very open about those things, you know, because I, I I could very easily, you know, say, hey, I did it this way and it's worked, you know. So, um, but yeah, we we we've made some tweaks to our to to the away game schedule. All right. Hey, Mike, Patrick Walker, DallasCowboys.com. Circling back to your cornerback, uh, obviously having coached Amari Cooper, you have uh, insight that some other coaches don't have. Can you talk about the challenges of, of going against him? Also with Trayvon Diggs, his first game back, you're down to Ron Bland, and a mobile quarterback that can kind of lengthen those coverage windows. 
Yeah, definitely. I, I think, you know, with Amari, you know, number one, just that you know, all the individuals that have worked, you know, with Amari and against Amari, um, you know, I think just the biggest thing is his, his route running ability is, is, is top notch. Uh, his ability, you know, for releases and, and tracking the ball. So, yeah, that, that's definitely things we, we've discussed um, long before last week when we put the plan in. So, you know, and I think clearly, too, the players that have been here, too, you know, Jay Lou and obviously Al and, you know, the group, you know, working against them. So, uh, you know, so we feel like we have a, you know, a, a good idea. When we all definitely know what he's capable of doing, that's for sure, and, and that's part of the game plan process. And the mobile quarterback, you know, yeah, that's that, that's that's been a little bit of a challenge, you know, trying to fit their offense last year to how they're going to play. But, you know, but also, you know, maybe he goes to 65% on Scott looks, you know. I mean, who knows? But um, you, you got to pay – Real close attention to how they run the ball. They were number one in the league in time of possession. So uh, I think we were three. Uh, so I mean, you're talking about two teams that that have the ability to, you know, uh, take care of the football. You know, uh, hold the ball. And so, uh, yeah, we we've looked at all those things. But yeah, it's a mobile quarterback, Amari, in a, in a in a tremendous run game. I mean, this is a this is a really big challenge for our defense. Thanks. Coming into this week, I mean, obviously the first week. Of the season opener, is do you, do you feel the team is excited or focused? How, how would you gauge their? Been- I think they're excited to get going. I mean, I think we all are. I mean, you know, today's, you know, I mean, someone said happy holidays. It's not. I mean, this is, you know, this is, a, we're, we're in normal down and distance and third down today. So I, you know, I, I think, uh, and it's always been my experience, and I just I'll speak on it here. Is, you know, you walk in there that that first morning. You know, we had some things. In a team meeting, a little, a little different uh, today. That we, you know, just administratively, that uh, we we wanted, wanted to address. But then it was all ball. I mean, this is this is what we live for. I mean, this is what we we want to do. I mean, we talk about Oxnard. Uh, it was the most you know the purest you know football opportunity that we've had. But now now we're back home. You know, now we're home. We got families. Uh, you know, the priority of that. The big we're back in the big city you know, of Dallas, and um, so we got to make sure our time on football, the efficiency and the and the discipline in that, especially the self-discipline, uh, is this is this is everything we talked about in the offseason. So uh, we get to have a full week, seven-day week, and get ready for a football game. And you know, because you know, you know our schedule. I mean, it's it's all over the place. So it's just it's important when you have a seven-day run uh, to take advantage of it and make sure we come out ready to go to, to win the game up here in Cleveland. Nicole. Cowboys, Dallas Cowboys media. Um, you mentioned how this is the first for a lot of your young guys, but specifically Kalen Carson. From what you've seen so far, how prepared do you feel like he is, and ready do you feel like he is? Well, I think Kalen's a good hands. You know, I mean, he's, um, you know, he, he has a, a, a quiet confidence about himself. You know, he's, yeah, I, he's, you know, since he's arrived here, I mean, I, I haven't, I haven't seen him really take a step backwards. You know, he. he, he he jumps right in there. He competes. Uh, very instinctive. Very aware. You know. So, um, yeah. But I mean, it's it's still going to be his first game. So it's just like you know, he has to get over that first game hump, just like a couple other guys do. So. All right. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you.